Good morning. Good morning this Mass is offered for Ed and Mary Schley. And we honor today the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. We take a moment and call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob gave his sons this charge. Since I am about to be taken to my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave that lies in the field of Ephron the Hittite. The cave in the field of Machpelah, facing on Mamre in the land of Canaan. The field that Abraham brought from Ephron the Hittite for a burial ground. There Abraham and his wife Sarah are buried, and so are Isaac and his wife Rebekah. And there too I buried Leah, the field and the cave in it that had been purchased from the Hittites. Now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful and thought, suppose Joseph has been nursing a grudge against us and now plans to pay us back in full for the wrong we did him. So they approached Joseph and said, Before your father died, he gave us these instructions. You shall say to Joseph, Jacob begs you to forgive the criminal wrongdoing of your brothers who treated you so cruelly. Please, therefore, forgive the crime that we, the servants of your father's God, committed. When they spoke these words to him, Joseph broke into tears. Then his brothers proceeded to fling themselves down before him and said, Let us be your slaves. But Joseph replied to them, Have no fear. Can I take the place of God? Even though you meant harm to me, God meant it for good, to achieve his present end, the survival of many people. Therefore, have no fear. I will provide for you and for your children. By thus speaking kindly to them, he reassured them. Joseph remained in Egypt together with his father's family. He lived 110 years. He saw Ephraim's children to the third generation, and the children of Manasseh's son, son Makar, also born on Joseph's knees. Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die. God will surely take care of you and lead you out of this land to the land that he promised on, on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then, putting the sons of Israel under oath, he continued, When God thus takes care of you, you must bring my bones up with you from this place. Joseph died at the age of 110. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, 
Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim his wondrous deeds. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Glory in his name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the Spirit of God rests upon you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, No one, no disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, for the slave that he become like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household. Therefore, do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. So today we hear the beginning of the end of the beginning of the end. And the brothers of Joseph won't let forgiveness forgive them. Now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful. As the guilty who have a shred of con conscience often do, they catastrophize. Joseph, Joseph will kill them. He will be as vengeful, ven vengeful as they were evil. But Joseph didn't really let them off the hook that easily. Maybe they should have gone to confession. In any case, Joseph forgave them fully. Have no fear. Can I take the place of God? Even though you meant harm to me, God meant it for good to achieve his present end, the survival of many people. Therefore, have no fear. I will provide for you and for your children. So he said and so he did. And maybe he was too good, certainly. His brothers weren't as good. And so, of course, we always try to bring people down to our own level. They mistrusted him. Who knew? You know, when it all comes down to it, all of this is to help us and certainly not to help God. He already knows all things. He already knows everything about us. He already knows far more than our own self-knowledge lets us know about us. All the good we've done and all the not good we've done and all the everything we've failed to do. He knows every thought you've ever had, every word you've ever said, every act you've ever done. God knows the hopes and desires of every human heart, every emotion you've ever felt, and everything that led to those emotions. It seems the more we live and learn about God, the more we'll learn or 
can learn if we're awake about ourselves. God knows all things about us, and he still loves us, and he still calls us to him. Imagine that. And now let's bring all those things to our loving God that we still might need. In gratitude and thanksgiving for one gift or one grace God has given us. And asking him for one gift or one grace we still might need. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the repose of the souls of all those who have been killed by this plague. And we ask for the restoration to health and a full recovery for all those now afflicted with it. We pray to the Lord. Lord and finally, we pray for one person we love. And we pray for one person we might find difficult to love. We pray to the Lord. Lord Good and loving God, you hear our prayers and you alone know all those things we need. This morning, we ask that you give us everything we ask for in fact, all according to your will. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And for the protection and purification of the church, we pray. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we honor the memory of the mother of your son, we pray, O Lord, that the oblation of this sacrifice may by your grace make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on this day in honor of the Blessed Ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived her only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, Louis, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
Let us pray. Grant to your church, O Lord, that strengthened by the power of this sacrament, she may eagerly walk in the pathways of the gospel until she reaches the blessed vision of peace, which the Virgin Mary, your lowly handmaid, already enjoys eternally in glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And here's the thing. Today we have some words to live by. Mostly, do not be afraid of anything. What would happen if you said to someone you don't like or love, can I take the place of God? Even though you meant to harm me, God meant it for good. Do not be afraid. That would set them off their socks, right? If you seek and find forgiveness, then be forgiven. It's only prideful to hold on to that from which you've been freed. Like you don't believe God can or will forgive you. The best and most we can do is to repent and go to confession, continue to turn our lives over to God, follow Jesus, let the Spirit guide our words and our work, let Jesus set us free from all sin and guilt. Do not be afraid. God knows all things about us, and he still loves us, and he still calls us to him. Imagine that. Do not be afraid. And today we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended.